and uh, welcome once again to our Bible study here at the Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Appleton, Wisconsin. Glad you're joining me uh, today. Hard to believe we're already in the, the middle of August, but uh, time does fly when you're having fun, and hopefully especially uh, having fun learning about uh, God's Word. Uh, as we continue our Bible studies, you know, on these Wednesdays, they're related to the readings uh, for uh, worship on Sunday. Today, uh, we look at Isaiah 66, uh, and we learn more about God's plan for his people and God's plan uh, really for all people. And so as we continue today, we're going to use uh, Portals of Prayer, July through September, and the blessing on the word. Heavenly Father, we pray for your word to spread throughout the world today. Let your spirit rain down blessing through the hearing, reading, and preaching of your word. We thank you, Jesus, for being the word made flesh and for saving us from sin, death, and the devil. Let your word be a light to all today and strengthen us through it. In Jesus' name, amen. Also, uh, Good Shepherd, we're blessed uh, this uh, weekend to have uh, Reverend Tim Beckendorf from Lutheran Bible Translators uh, with us today. And he uh, lives over here uh, in Africa translating the Bible into the languages there. Um, you know, one thing I like about looking at a map this way, very colorful, is that it gives us an, an understanding of how big our world is, right? And sometimes, you know, for us in, in Wisconsin, in Appleton, we, you know, our, our, our life point is really like this red dot. You know, that's all we think about. That's all our focus is, where we live, where we are at. And yet there's so much more to our world today. And our theme is to declare my glory uh, to the nations. Okay? Isaiah 66, 18. Uh, For I know their works and their thoughts, and the time is coming to gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and shall see my glory. This per pericope, so a pericope is uh, the readings appointed uh, for Sunday worship, uh, your Old Testament, your epistle, and your gospel reading. And the beauty of the pericope is that we get the whole counsel of God this way, um, is that we get to hear from the Old Testament, we get to hear an epistle, a letter, or even revelation for that matter. And then we also get to hear about the life and ministry of Jesus. And we see how the Old Testament and, and the gospels are prophecy fulfillment oftentimes, uh, and how that epistle is a guiding uh, principle for our living and is a proclamation of what Christ has done in fulfilling the Old Testament and uh, the New Testament, his ministry. So this is what a pericope ends uh, Isaiah, the last part of the prophecy of Isaiah, a section that points ahead to the Messianic kingdom and its glory. I know their works and their thoughts attaches to the previous verse which describes the abominable actions of apostate Jews who had adopted pagan religious practices. It was to such defectors among his own people that the Lord said, The time is coming to gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and shall see my glory. Much later, the apostle Paul said something similar to the Jews of Poseidon and Antioch when they rejected the gospel and opposed his works. It is striking that Isaiah said all nations would be allowed to see the Lord's glory, a privilege that had not been granted even to Moses. So what is it about the glory of the Lord that ultimately allowed the nations to see it and not die but find life in it? And so as a reference point, we look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4. In their case, the God of this world has blinded their minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God. For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. Okay? So, as we think about God's glory, and we think about how he has revealed himself uh, that we could gaze upon him and and know him 
and believe in him and therefore receive his glory and be a part of his glory. Uh, it's all about Jesus here. God's son, the word became flesh and dwelled among us and we have seen his glory. The glory of the only son of the father full of grace and truth. So to see the glory of God is to see Jesus by faith. To know that God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son that all who believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. The fact is that all nations will see the glory of Jesus because Jesus will return. Okay. Uh, return as judge. We confess this, that Jesus returns to judge the living and the dead. And that is all people, the living and the dead. And when he comes and judge the living and the dead, the dead are raised, the living are judged as those who are still alive, and all people will see the glory of God. The believers will welcome this glory because Jesus returns and he is the Savior whom we have believed in and have waited for his coming to take us into his kingdom that has no end. And then unbelievers will see the glory of, of Jesus, the glory of God, who is Jesus. Unfortunately, they will receive the punishment because of their unbelief. So they will be cast out uh, into the eternal fire where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So to, to know the glory of God is, to, is in Jesus, God's Son, who came into this world uh, and has saved all people. Now we know Jesus, you know, we receive the glory of Jesus at our baptism. Uh, we're brought into Christ, and we know him as Savior and Lord. We have the glory of Jesus through his word, the living word that we talked about uh, last time. And we also have uh, Jesus uh, present um, in the Lord's Supper, his body and blood for our forgiveness and salvation. So we uh, will know the glory of Jesus, uh, the glory of God through Jesus, who triumphed over the grave. And all will see this glory um, as Jesus returns as the judge of all people. And, of course, the hope is that they will believe in Jesus and receive uh, the glory um, with great joy because they know of the eternity that he has provided for them in heaven with him. And I will set a sign among them, and from them I will send survivors uh, to the nations, to Tarshish, Pool, and Lud, who draw the bow, to Tubal and Javan, and to the coastlands afar off, that have not heard my fame or seen my glory, and they shall declare my glory among the nations. I will set a sign among them, may refer back to Isaiah 11, 10 to 12, which promises that the root of Jesse, the promised Christ, will raise a signal for the nations, the ultimate sign of this root of Jesse. Of course, his cross and the empty tomb, which invite all to believe in him and be saved. In this lesson, those who respond to God's either or gospel sign are called survivors. So what is the, uh, the assignment of the, uh, will be given to the survivors? Now we think about survivors, we can also reference Revelation in my mind. Who are these clothed in white robes and where have they come? These are the ones who have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. They have come out of the great tribulation. So as we live this life, you know, do we consider ourselves as survivors um, in the sense that we um, survive our sinful world and we survive the devil and we live in the victory of Jesus every day? Um, we may think ourselves as survivors. Ultimately, we reach heaven because, you know, the challenges that it is uh, to live here and now. But what's awesome uh, for the survivors is 
um, that they are the ones who will declare the glory. So this is this this wonderful proclamation that we have throughout Scripture. And again, it's great for the believer. It's not great uh, for the unbeliever. In that last day, I mean, we will bear the mark of, of Jesus uh, by faith, and we will be welcomed into heaven while uh, those who do not know Jesus, uh, you know, they are, they are uh, judged to eternal death. So we're, uh, the assignment we have is that we are the, uh, the survivors, those who uh, have been made triumphant, uh, through Jesus, and we bear witness to this victory uh, that He has won for us. We are we are His glory as the redeemed believers um, uh, of Jesus, and and we can even say that as we, you know, um, look to this judgment day where this is readily known, uh, we can be those uh, who still invite. Uh, the world, call the world to repent and to believe and also uh, be saved so that again, they are, they are waiting in anticipation for its judgment, they know the glory of God and they will see it in its fullness uh, in heaven above when Christ returns and it shall bring all your brothers from all the nations as an, offspring, as an offering to the Lord on horses and in chariots and in litters and on mules and on dominaries to my holy mountain Jerusalem says the Lord just as the Israelites begin uh, bring their grain offering in a clean vessel to the house of the Lord and some of them also I will take for priests and for Levites says the Lord so the glory of the Lord will be displayed as all your brothers are an offering to the Lord this promised the rescue of the chosen Israel but it was ultimately fulfilled as the chosen ones of the nations became brothers and sisters in God's covenant family, the body of Christ. The glory of the Lord will be fulfilled as the nations become a willing offering to the Lord. So everybody joined together uh, because of Jesus' glory, uh, because of his redeeming work that we have together. So what will some of these foreigners in God's family even be selected to do? Uh, that they will be taken for priests. They will serve as priests. Uh, you know, priests at one time were specific to uh, the Levites, that chosen a tribe of God's people. But now even these foreigners uh, get to serve as, as the priests of God. And we can think about how we are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people uh, belonging to God that we may declare... We may declare uh, the wonderful gifts of God, um, declare the glory of the Lord even today. So as we think about our life and, and the glory of the Lord that we have um, uh, in our, our life today because of what Jesus has done, because we know Jesus, uh, we look forward to that, that glory everlasting. We look forward to to uh, being joined together as the body of Christ, that church triumphant in heaven, celebrating all that Jesus has, has done for us, that God has uh, fulfilled his promise, he has rescued um, his people and brought them into his kingdom, uh, which has no end. So uh, this is a wonderful blessing for all of us. For as the new heavens and the new earth that I make, shall remain before me, says the Lord, so shall your offspring and your name remain. Okay, this is again the, the penultimate uh, as we think about the end of Isaiah and we talk about, you know, where our hope and our peace really, really, uh, really lays. Or it's not in the things of this world, but in what is to come. Uh, from the new moon uh, to new moon, and from Sabbath to Sabbath, all flesh shall come to worship before me, declares the Lord. How enduring will this messianic, messianic kingdom be? Well, from Sabbath to Sabbath, from new moon to new moon. Uh, the kingdom of God that has no end. That has no end. This is what eternity is all about. Uh, the kingdom that has no end. And what will be the hallmark of life in the messianic kingdom? All flesh will come 
and worship me. You know, this is what we also see in Revelation, of course, where everybody's gathered around the throne and the Lamb, and they're offering uh, their, their praises uh, for the one who um, was slain, but now has risen from the dead, Jesus Christ, who has made us, enabled us, and by faith to receive his glory. You know, we who are poor, miserable sinners received his glory as the forgiven uh, people of God through his work, received in faith. And so, you know, through Jesus to may, be made right with God and to join him in heaven forever is just almost too wonderful us, for us to think about, but yet it's something that we always want to think about uh, because as we journey here and we think about, you know, the challenges that, that happen here and, you know, really does our faith matter, does our life with God matter, you know, do we continue to persevere in our faith um, and, and maybe sometimes we, we are rather discouraged or, um, you know, troubled is that, yes, you know, persevere, believe in the Lord, he will return. Um, you know, we will be judged when we die uh, if Christ doesn't return first. When, if Christ returns, uh, you know, uh, after we die, our, our body and soul will be raised. And we will know um, the Lord in his, in his fullness, body and soul, to be with him forever. Um, you know, the sad part for me, I, I just don't revel in, you know, the death of the wicked. Um you know, no matter how hard they may make our life be, we still have you know, eternity with the Lord. But we will also uh, find comfort in that God, is, uh, comfort, uh, God has defeated his enemies fully and completely. And they will no longer have any hold uh, or any place uh, in our life or in the life of the church triumphant. Um, so, you know, to conclude Isaiah in this, in this way is to really, you know, remind the people of the heavenly kingdom, uh, to remind them of his judgment, uh, to remind them that, uh, you know, how he, he will use his people who survive, um, how God has enabled us to survive, and that we will sing his praises forever. Until that day, that day though, we serve the Lord today. We invite others to believe. We, we let them know that the day of judgment will come and to be ready uh, for that day to and so all nations right uh, can join together in heaven uh, rather than um, go to eternal death so uh, here we have it then uh, today Isaiah 66 uh, you know when you read the book of Isaiah it's a fascinating uh, book for sure a lot to the study and and to learn um, but remember you know God is is working in such a way so that People know him and, uh, and are drawn to him uh, by what he does, uh, that they can all believe in him and be saved. The work that all of us are, should be invested in and, and desire to do every day. So thanks for joining me again today. Pleasure to, to lead you in God's word. Look forward to our time next Wednesday uh, when uh, at noon we meet or whenever you watch uh, this study. So uh, God bless your day and your continued study of God's word.